to już ponad dwa lata. Dwa lata bez konferencji, bez meetupów, bez tego wszystkiego, o czym jako community deweloperów żyliśmy jeszcze przed pandemią. Dlatego w momencie, kiedy dostajesz takie zaproszenie, chyba jedyne co możesz zrobić to odwołać wszystko, co miałeś zaplanowane, kupić bilet na najbliższy samolot, skoczyć z samochód i czym prędzej udać się na lotnisko, by móc ponownie doświadczyć tego, czego doświadczyłeś kilka lat wcześniej. I choć nadchodzące trzy dni to w perspektywie ostatnich dwóch lat, to pewne tylko chwila mgnieje, ale możliwość zmiany otoczenia i wynikająca z tego zmiana perspektywy powoduje, że zasadniczo nie ma żadnych wątpliwości. Udało się na ostatnią chwilę, ale jestem na lotnisku i w sumie jak to zwykle podróż z Mariuszem. W tej chwili miałem być na Malcie, czekając na przesiadkę do innego miasta, ale w tym momencie jestem w Wrocławiu. Lecę do Frankfurtu, żeby tam złapać przesiadkę. A gdzie lecę? A to się okaże troszeczkę później, bo na zaproszenie pewnej osoby lecę w pewne miejsce, ale żeby tam dolecieć, to się trzeba trochę poprzesiadać. Następnym opóźnieniem i gonitwą po lotnisku, jak to zwykle, z podróży Mariusza Malne udało się dotarłem do Frankfurtu. Teraz dosłownie 5 minut oczekiwania, no i w końcu lot do Bolonii i potem jeszcze kilka przesiadek, ale to już będą pociągi. Udało się w końcu dotrzeć do Bolonii z przygodami, bo oczywiście mi walizkę zgubili. Teraz jeszcze tylko dwa pociągi do Bolonii i poza Bolonią i będę na miejscu. Pewnie gdzieś koło 23. Po 11 godzinach podróży wreszcie Rikione. Rikione? Rikione? <grywa> Jutro się dowiem, jak to się wymawia. Ale wreszcie, na miejscu. I cała ta podróż zasadniczo jest z jednego powodu, bo przyjechałem tutaj do Włoch, do Rikione, na retreat. A czy w sumie jest retreat, może się teraz zastanawiasz. Tylko trochę tu za ciemno, że temu pogadać i zróbmy tak. I w całym tym rytmowym pomyśle chodzi o to, aby tak na chwilę wybić się z codzienności, spotkać się z osobami, z którymi być może na co dzień nie mamy większego kontaktu i zderzać, zderzać i jeszcze raz zderzać nasze perspektywy. Bo często jest tak, że myślimy na bardzo podobne tematy, ale w zupełnie inny sposób i takie po odbijaniu od siebie różnych pomysłów, różnych idei często prowadzi do jakichś zupełnie nowych odkryć. I choć nie mogę Wam pokazać, co dokładnie będzie działo się na tym rytmie, ponieważ są to rzeczy prywatne dla pewnej firmy, to możemy porozmawiać z autorem tego zamieszania na pytania które wy mu zadaliście. Hi Alberto. Hello. Alberto, I've got a few questions to you. The first one, what we are doing here? Well, we, we organize a, a two days retreat for the um, people in the my, in my company network, in uh, Advanced Computers Network. And uh, we just had a two day open space, kind of uh, open in, uh, in terms of uh, Uh, topics uh, a lot about collaboration, uh, uh, cross uh, cross functional collaboration, UX and, and, and team uh, agile. Not so much software architecture this year. It used to be a little bit more on the other times, but uh, mostly uh, 30 pretty smart uh, professionals uh, exploring new ways for collaborating, and that was uh, that was cool. Yeah. So, how it After all, I'm in this tired, happy state <laughs> that I was missing really, really a lot, and uh, and. Uh, And the brain is going at full capacity, making connection. Okay, so we need to try this and this and this. So I guess that's exactly what I wanted to do. Now it's time to connect the dots. 
Yeah, well, tomorrow, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh... so I've got a few questions to you from you. Okay. <laughs> so the first one, you probably expect what the first the question is. Okay. You've got some assumptions? Yes. So the, the it's, it, it wasn't set up to be honest. Okay. Uh, well, if if the question is uh, is about uh, finishing the book, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, what about the book? When we can expect so the next update? I would say relatively soon because I I restarted working on uh, on uh, on the content. I actually uh, was uh, working on a on a content map of the remaining things uh, in uh, yeah in the last in the last three days. What happened in the meanwhile? Uh, we we actually started and uh, almost finished working, it's going to be published in, in a few days, uh, a new book from the Italian DDD community in Italian, so it was a, a big parenthesis, but actually gave me back a few other contents, a way to connect the, the remaining dots with this. So expect updates uh, pretty, pretty soon because uh, I started working working back on it. I tried to tell them that two questions are forbidden. That was the one question. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> the second was uh, with the dogs and fight of the horses, but uh, the next question. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I knew about one forbidden question, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, the next question. Um, the online storming versus on-site even storming. Uh, any tips from the Mr. Stormer, Grande Stormer, how to collaborate in digital era? Uh, because you know, the people remember your article. Your... Yeah, so a few, few things happened. So uh, three years ago, I, I was tweeting about the best tool for online even storming That's as a right. plane ticket. <laughs> then we had the COVID and then I wrote the two articles because my brain was completely mm -hmm. split. And then we had two years of uh, forced experimentation. And then uh, we got back in a place where this uh, uh, forced uh, remote is, uh, is no longer a constraint. So let's say now we have data. The situation now, 2022 is, is actually uh, the, this one. Uh, I wouldn't go big picture unless really forced to. Like uh, we tried some big pictures remotely. We know how to make it work. It is painful. It takes time and it has less impact of an in-person version. So if you want to have big, big, big impact of big kickoff in person, big picture still works better. Now you have the choice. I would take a plane ticket. Talking about process modeling and software design, situation is closer to even. We had a pretty good process modeling in person a couple of weeks ago, and that was extremely effective. But a few people need to travel, need to be in the same space, uh, same place, uh, and uh, so it might be a little bit of a return on investment. We want a bigger impact. We have the budget for this in the organizational space. Go for presence is still funnier, and a few other conversations will happen. Uh, you can't have this, you're forced to be remote. Okay, we can model processes online. There is a gap, it's a reasonable gap. And the uh, same goes for online software modeling. I mean, it is still funnier to do it in person, a lot more collaboration challenges and a lot more personal impact. Are you constrained to do this? Well, even, I mean, even before the pandemic, we were having modeling session in person, and then for the ongoing meeting or smaller uh, session between developers, we ended up going, uh, uh, going online. We still have our internal software documentation currently on Miro. So it depends on what you're measuring it. But yeah, this guy can talk forever about the event storming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The next question is also about the event storming, as you may expect. Uh, you said that the event storming is the uh, formula for the workshop. So what is the future for this formula? I think we had a few good ideas uh, uh, today. I mean, we were uh, exploring the, the areas. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a parallel exploration from a uh, UX team and service design team and uh, software architect team. And uh, there are some things that we are calling with different names, which are really similar. And other teams, it seems like they are the same thing, but they are not. It, but if the other side, uh, uh, I mean, I try to be as crossover as possible, but uh, if people are open to this, uh, to this discussion, uh, actually we can do parallel, simultaneous exploration in this area. That's one of the experiments we're gonna do. Uh, we've done a pretty good session last week when we were exploring process modeling, and then uh, in the same workshop, uh, we ended up with uh, uh, given when then uh, testing uh, corner case scenarios and a lot of information that was that was really really useful uh, to lead uh, uh, to lead us to a quick prototype and that was incredibly uh, happening in a short time we did the exploration roughly in three hours 
the key people were still in the room. Wait a minute, even <laughs> when then, please get me this, this scenario. Give me a black and white answer. Okay, now I have the answer. In a few cases, we didn't have the answer. We said like, oh, we need to escalate to upper management, but we have a question that needs a black and white solution. Decide black or white. Once I have it, I can implement it. That was really, really effective. Same session. That, that's, that's what I wanted to say. Really, three hours mapping the, the process and that, okay, edge case, base cases, edge cases, all collected on the train. I, I, I brought it back on a markdown document and, uh, and then uh, the, the day after in some feature file. So observe the lean pop, maybe the update will be over there. So um, the idea of the event storming is, I think at this moment, the, uh, eight years old. I believe, yeah, more, roughly, more yeah. or less. Is there anything you would like to change today in the technique? Maybe you put some accents in the wrong places. I mean, from the perspective of today, of course. Um, one thing that was uh, a good side effect of the, of the Force Remote, we, we started uh, using emojis as, as part of the grammar in process modeling and software design, but also in big picture. I mean, there's a lot of cross-pollination between formats. Uh, and, uh, and this was... Uh, was actually driving a lot more engagement from uh, from, from the people. That uh, uh, I would I would clearly change the original blog post, but yes, I mean <laughs> that that was the, the first brain dump before. So what, it, what would be changed? It looks like there's that's a way, and then uh, and then a few people still think like uh, yeah, we are we need to do an even storming workshop, and for me it's just like with recipe. We, we, mm -hmm. it, is it going to be a big picture or process modeling or, or this uh, or maybe it's going to be me uh, asking, framing, framing this, but uh, th there's some discussion that could be a little bit easier if we, if we, if we could frame uh, what, what is the type of uh, format that, that we're thinking about. Because yeah, to, uh, to, to be honest, it took me some time to get out from this thinking at the beginning. At so the beginning, I had on, beginning. only one, and then, uh, then it was working in some scenario, then I, I was getting some mm -hmm. other places where, okay, the original recipe, this way need, needed to change. And, uh, I needed some adaptation and also getting into some corner cases. The one question is from me, because uh, I think it was a couple of years ago when we were in London together, we had some discussion uh, late in the evening about the model storming. Yep. How does your model storming idea is going? Maybe the first question, because what's the model storming case? No, so in, in partially yes. So uh, at the beginning, I, I had uh, I, I had a very many ideas in my head because I also had the talk called Model Storming and I and I did it I think on in uh, InfoQ conference. Uh, I'm, I'm not really uh, really sure. That was a long time ago. Then I framed things a little bit uh, uh, better, and uh, because I I realized that the pain point that I had was uh, I was writing down a recipe for even storming. Then I realized that I was uh, changing the recipe every time I, I tried to use it. It made me look kind of stupid, like, oh, but you wrote the recipe, you're not even able to uh, write it. And then I realized, no, there is a meta recipe that I'm following. And the meta recipe is just uh, a, a way of inspecting and adapting. It's just like, uh, basically, I try to visualize the, the, the most important thing. And in even storming, the first step is given, it's events. And, uh, and, uh, and then I repeatedly ask myself and the audience, now that you see this, what is the next most important thing that you need to visualize? So it might be something that you think about, it might be something that you check with the audience, but the key idea is every step is making the next step clear. As a modeler, I just need to have one more color in my bag, one more notation which is not clashing with the other one. So maybe a complementary color, maybe something of different shape or different orientation. Maybe maybe I need to draw lines, maybe I need to include people. And uh, the, yeah, in even storming, it might be people and system, and then you see boundaries and, and the other thing. But the meta process is uh, visualize something, make the next step, evident in terms of needs, find a way to model this and then repeat. On top of this, oh, now I would like to see where are we making money or which part of this process is bringing value. It, it becomes obvious after you do it and it's actually very, very simple, but it takes the courage of, uh, well, having a plan and doing something else instead. So you need to react and see what's yeah. happened. And this, that was what, mm -hmm. what happened in, in, in London. We prepared five alternative plans with a priority. And we made six. <laughs> and and we, we started one. And then I looked at the audience, this is going mm -hmm. nowhere. 
and uh, what, what about this? And then, uh, oh, what, we need to see this. And it was uh, visualizing what was the next obvious step for them. And, uh, and, and it was exactly what they needed. I was not thinking that could be so impactful for them. And that was the game changer. The truth was already in front of their eyes, but they couldn't see it. The moment we make it visible and, 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 and readable, that was a slap in their faces or mm -hmm. gentle one. And this is very important. If the storming doesn't work for you at a specific moment, change the tool. This is just a tool. Yeah. And one, one thing that we started doing in terms of uh, experimenting when going uh, and going online, uh, online you have the privilege of infinite space, also vertically, which is an issue for people like me. You're not forced to have only one tool in a room. Mm -hmm. So we are asking for a room for a very large wall and usually you get one. And then, but then even storming will work really, really well when you have the inner storming and impact mapping and or, and or business model canvas and or worldly mapping. So going, going online, we, we ended up with the physical space limitation. So you could, could just jump from one model to another one. It might be confusing for some people, but then we also work with, with some people that had all those tools in this, uh, in this toolbox and jumping from one modeling tool to another one till you have uh, a vision which is starting to, okay, I see this is from a business modeling perspective. I see this from the flow perspective. Yes, two sides of the same coin. I'm gonna buy this coin, mm -hmm. then, then it works. It's actually some of the principle of uh, modeling Whirlpool from Domain Driven Design. Eric Evans and apply to, to a different scale, I would say. Okay, so the last question. Any tip for someone who would like to start in installing? Because now, right now, this, this technique is well known, but sometimes someone would like to put just, just start. Okay. So any tip from the inventor of this technique? Uh, I would say maybe practice in a safe space. So if, if I want to, if, you, if you're thinking for the, for the, um, for the software design, maybe you would like to take, make some practice with the notation first. So take maybe a, a problem you already know, or maybe even better, a problem that you're curious about, not something that you really have a solution for, because your solution might be biasing into mm. repeating what you already uh, found out. But something that you're curious about, you have enough information, let's see how this is gonna look in a new storming way. You can do it by yourself, just like to get some fluency in. Uh, uh, in, in the notation. It, it was born with me doing things. So then I realized that it, I had people jumping over, but uh, I needed to brain dump what I had in mind. If you want to go for big picture, then, then meetups, because big picture is mostly about uh, managing a crowd and uh, no matter how much you do it yourself, you, you need people in the same room. It will be challenging, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, but the experience will be there. But, uh, but yes, in a meetup, uh, you, you're just doing people a favor. You're not asking their time. They are there mm -hmm. to, to, to practice. You're, you're going to have an experiment together. So yeah, I, I think that's a, that is a better, uh, better scenario. And uh, now it's a little reminder on our side, we actually were working on a little even storming kit for meetup, something that could be printed in terms of instruction, making the game available. Uh, that was the part during the pandemic because, uh, well, <laughs> I don't want to be part of, <laughs> of, of a bigger mess. I mean, how we legal could sound put all the people in the same room and then do this? Well, maybe now we have the chance to get, get back into this, uh, into this interaction. Yeah, for process modeling, it's more or less like uh, get some fluency in, in, the, in the thinking. It doesn't have to be software, but it's actually maybe the area which is, uh, with, which is in the sweet spot because you're not getting sucked into uh, technical discussion too early, but you can still formalize a lot of the existing processes. To już dwa tygodnie minęły od momentu powrotu z Rikita, z Rikione. Głowa po prostu paruje od różnego rodzaju pomysłów. Tyle ciekawych rzeczy tam się udało dotknąć, że przez najbliższe kilka miesięcy pewnie będę to jeszcze implementował. Ale jeżeli w Twoim zespole, w Twojej firmie, w Twojej organizacji masz okazję przeprowadzić podobną inicjatywę, uwierz, naprawdę warto. Cześć!